Well, hello and happy new year to the fellow food enthusiasts out there. I'm Angela Taylor, the owner and chief indulge officer at Indulge Boise. And it is truly my pleasure to welcome you to our first show of 2024. I can't believe it's already 2024. Um, but welcome to Culinary Chats with Indulge Boise. You know, similar to the culinary experiences that we curate with Indulge Boise Food Tours, what we're hoping to do here on Culinary Chats with Indulge Boise is to embark on this delicious journey, if you will, through Idaho and Boise's culinary landscape. We want to be guided by the, the brilliant minds and personalities that are really shaping the evolution of the food scene here in Idaho. And in fact, you know, from those innovative chefs to visionary entrepreneurs and passionate brewers, dedicated farmers, everybody throughout the food chain. We want to share their story. And so we want to thank all of you that have joined us so far for the launch of Culinary Chats with Indos Boise. We've had some great conversations with uh, Chris Kamori from Kin, with Carrie from Western Proper, Western uh, Collective, and a series of other brands. And today we have another really special guest that I am so excited to be able to share their story and their journey with you. And hopefully you will get a chance to sample some of their delectable food as we continue some food for thoughts and some soulful conversations here on Culinary Chats. So today, thanks for joining us as my special guests, Brandon and Adriani Timberlake, join us from Timberlake's Cuisine. Timberlake's Cuisine is a family-owned and operated seasonal 365-day-a-year soul food mobile catering service. Owner Brandon and Adriani Timberlake, their goals are, one, to bring back the true essence of cooking, and two, to provide fresh and soulful food to Boise's nightlife. And that is exactly what they do. The Timberlakes bring family and love to their cuisine. For Brandon and Adriani, cooking has always been part of their life. So when COVID hit, Brandon decided to actually pursue his desire of starting up his catering business. And now, luckily for those of us around the Treasure Valley, we can enjoy some delicious, soulful food. Thank you again for tuning in to Culinary Chats with Indulge Boise as we share some food for thought in a soulful conversation with Brandon and Adriani Timberlake. Happy New Year and welcome to Culinary Chats with Indulge Boise, Brandon and Adriani. Happy New Year. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? I am doing well. Much better after having some Timberlake's cuisine in 2023. And I am hopeful that my uh, 2024 has more of that in store. Um, nice. I had the pleasure, um, Brandon and Adriana, of um, having you guys cater an event for uh, me in the fall. And uh, the food was phenomenal. I know all of my guests enjoyed it. And so I have been really excited to be able to be in conversation with you. We just talked a little bit about um, your goals for Timberlake's cuisine. But Brandon, I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about about Timberlake's Cuisine, who you are and what you're doing, where we can find you. Yeah, Timberlake's Cuisine is really a family-oriented business. It's a little bit of everything. We really strive to um, bring back the essence of true cooking, of focusing on what the food wants us to do instead of what we want the food to do, because it does have a state of its own mind, <laughs> you know, when allowing it to um, cook the way we do. We use our smoker for everything, so that's like the little niche we have we use our smoker for all of our proteins so it adds a different flavor profile whether we're using it for italian or using it for our traditional soul food it adds our own flavor profile to it so you know we just wanted to bring that back you know with cooking and food it's so important that you know those are those things are are taken seriously because it it, it brings so much joy to our life so I think that's that's really the main point of Timberlake's cuisine is to bring joy, the joy we feel from cooking and, and having those that experience into other people's lives. Well, let's dig into that a little bit more because that really resonates with me, that the joy, the essence of true cooking. Like, tell us more about that from the perspective of someone who can't cook at all. What yeah. is the essence of true cooking? <laughs> I think the essence of true, true cooking for me, it's I, I think it should be different for everybody. But the the base of it, I think, is the same 
for all people who love it the way I do and love this art. It's um, it's just having that time pass by and creating something from nothing, right? Especially if you're doing it from scratch. It's not um, it's 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 almost creating something new, you know, and then putting it out and people either giving you like, oh man, this is man, this is amazing. Or, you know what, I probably wouldn't have did that. And then it also, that to me, gives me more ideas. So to me, it's just about creating and having that that joy in that. Yeah, you know, I've heard culinary arts for years and I didn't make the association between, right, the culinary industry um, and food and the arts until recently when I started this endeavor with Indulge Boise. And so often when I was interacting with chefs or restaurant owners such as yourselves, uh, just it was there was an artistry that was on display as they oh, talked about the food, the food making process, what they were trying to curate and create. It really is artful, whether it's the um, the plating skills, whether yeah. it's the ingredients that they use, right? There is this amazing connection through art, and it has me appreciating food in a much different way than I did before. Adriani, I'm curious for you, right, at the, the other half, the better half, let's say, yeah. um, Timberlake <laughs> cuisine, what does um, food mean to you? And what's your journey been like? Honestly, I have no relation with food. <laughs> I just am a supporter. Um, I love to be able to have a chef <laughs> as a husband. Um, I definitely, like you're saying, it is really nice to see him when he does have the time to plate it and create like his own art. Um, I do 100% agree with you there. Like, it's just really cool to be able to witness that and finally convince him to start the business and share with others that. So definitely, yeah, that's, but I'm just, yeah, a big supporter. <laughs> but see, wow. that's, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, see, that's why I'm going to dig into that. It's funny because I know that's her true answer, but it's <laughs> it's it's only seen that way from people who don't see food the way I do. To me, she has so much to do with food. She more than she knows. Like her grandmother used to always cook on Sundays when after we come from our spiritual meeting, and she would cook every Sunday, and it brought us together every Sunday. So, you know, it's, it's sometimes like for me, it, it holds different significance. Right. And that's, and that's not to everybody, like building a car holds a different significance to a mechanic than it would for me. But that same feeling, that's what you get from food. Like you, she doesn't see it on that, but if you would ask her about family, food would come up. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, it kind of starts with the food but it ends with the food almost for her. So it's just, you know, I mean, I agree with her. Like she, it wasn't a culinary, wasn't her dream, but like yeah. it did keep and bring us together. So. Well, I know? love yeah. that you bring up. It's, you know, I do a lot of leadership um, development and, and talking to leaders, you look at different things and you're like, oh, that is somebody else's gift or somebody else's superpower. Mm -hmm. uh, and you think mm -hmm. about um, in, you know, artists or graphic designers, you're like, I, I don't have the ability to be an artist. I can't draw anything further than a stick person, right? <laughs> but a lot of people in the industry is like, we're all artists. And what happens so often is when we compare ourselves to others, we smother our joy, the essence of cooking that can show up. We, show the, we kind of smother um, the potential for us to create our own, mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. Benchy. And so, yeah. Brandon, I think for you, I wonder, like, how early did you recognize that you were a culinary artist and, and what has your journey been like? Um, I would say around. Honestly, I didn't I didn't know it was going to be something. I always told my grandma I wanted to be a chef. Like I was in the kitchen with her all the time, but it didn't matter whose house I went to. I ended up in the kitchen. <laughs> like, you know, and I'm a big guy now, but I was a really small kid. Like, you know, so <laughs> like it was always, it was interesting. Somebody was has like, to be a taste little, tester. Somebody yeah, has to you know, and it was, and it was just, I mean, to me, that's where the most happiest place was. Everybody laughed. Nobody was arguing in the kitchen, everybody. And if we were, it was about who had the better this or who had the better that, you know? So it's a, it's still a family oriented situation. So to me, like if food can do this, then I got to figure out how to, be the best at this so when times are hard or bad I can bring 
happiness to a either a bad situation or you know my situation so or somebody else is in the worst time right because we get together at funerals but for some reason we all laughing and talking when we're eating and it's like uh, we're not sad like you know no but that that essence brings us together and it and it turns over that leaf so yeah i think that's i say around like maybe nine nine or ten i felt nice. like this is what i'm gonna do like yeah that's where the magic happens. You hear so often, you know, where there's kids that just grew up in the kitchen with their, you know, their mother, mm -hmm. aunts, or, you know, maybe out in the barbecue grill with their father, just being around and listening to the sights and the sounds and the smells that were transpiring yeah. in that kitchen. And that's where that passion evolved. And, you know, you say something about food that really resonates with me, Brandon. Uh, when I started Indulge Boise in 2016, I was trying to figure out a way how to connect people, connect people to themselves to find out more about who I am, what I like, what my story is, to connect mm -hmm. us with each other, right? Just to be in conversation right. and proximity with each other and to appreciate who we are as individuals and collectively, and then to connect folks with neighborhoods or, you know, different experiences uh, right, in, right. in the Treasure Valley. And I was trying to figure out, so what is the thing, what's the common denominator that allows us to be connected? And I remembered back to the, my earliest days, it was sitting around the, the table, whether it was at Thanksgiving, right, in Mountain Home with some friends and family, mm -hmm. and the stories that were being exchanged, watching like Dallas Cowboys on TV. Um, but I think so many of the memories that are my strongest memories that are etched in my mind are centered around food. And so I completely agree with you that food is the common denominator in the mm -hmm. joy that we find so often in life. And, and as you are curating what's happening with Timber Timberlake's cuisine. I'm curious, um, either Adriani or, or Brandon, you can answer this. When you are serving your customers and your clients, what's what do you receive when you get the positive feedback from them? I That's me. Um, I love to see. I am always telling him, I'll like elbow him, like, look, and just to see their first bite or to, to hear like, I've been waiting to try your food for months. We've had customers tell us that they've dro driven two hours just to try like his food, yeah. which we we love those customers. We are really hopeful that we can definitely have a spot that's consistent so that they continue to come. Um, but just to see the face or to see like that, it's like also worth it. When he took the first bite, um, you know, just to see the that they're like, wow, are they almost like flashback to those like core moments of like, man, I can remember sitting and this tastes, you know, almost better than my mama's. They don't <laughs> want to say it, but, you know, so it's just I love that part. And I'm always telling him like, look, and, you know, that's our favorite. That's my favorite part of serving them. And. Or even, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I would say, um, did you want us both to answer just one? Yeah, yeah. I would love to hear uh, I, For me, like, it's um, it's all that. And, like, like, I don't think people understand, like, I'm not here for the, um, the clout. Cooking for me was never been about how can I, like, when I'm on social media, if anybody really knows me, I don't really like social media. But I know it's a necessity because, you know, it's how you can show people like, hey, we're here. Um, thank you for show appreciation when you can't go and say, hey, guys, I want to come and say hello and say thank you. So but I, I love that um, it puts them in a place like where when I taste it, it's almost like I can I share with them a piece of me. You know what I'm saying? Like and that piece is the best part to me like the best part of me, you know, and that way of like aspect of um, what I can do. And when they taste it, they're just like, oh, like, you know, or they'll, <laughs> you hear them say, I'm from Texas or I'm from Louisiana and this gumbo. And then they taste it and they're like, where, where are you from again? Yeah. Right. Where right. From? But where's your people from? So then to me, that means that I did the dish. First of all, I did the cuisine justice. That's yeah. the biggest thing. And that's important because it's not, I mean, once they pay you, it's how do you feel? Is it about the money or is it about the actual, it's for me, great. I like to watch them eat it there because, or at least take a bite. So I can see if I did that, you know, and I call it time travel. Like <laughs> technically we can't time travel as far as, you know, folks say we know we can't. So can I help you do that to a good time? Because sometimes people pick, uh, pick bad times yeah. to try to go back and fix mentally. But I just want to take you to a good place. 
And -hmm. wherever that place is for you, that's good for you. You know, and, and usually that is the the thing I get. And you hear customers say things like, man, this tastes like, man, going to the, the, the candy lady chili. And I'm like, I said, you know what? <laughs> I said, that is crazy. Because I, that's what I was looking to get to. So to me, I took my time to do it and it, and it, it, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It actually proved to be that I did what I needed to do. And it, and it was nice, man. So, you know, it's, it's always great to know that they appreciate it, but know that it's not out there enough because yeah. people, you can tell from people mm -hmm. the faces, it's like, I thought this was going to be another like, oh, okay, cool. But like, they're like, no, nah, this is it. And you just hear people say, when your restaurant opening? No, we don't want to know when you're going to be down here. When's the restaurant oh, opening? Oh, you hear you know? them saying, oh, that's the best place. And yeah. they, they have yeah. the best this yeah. or, it and they're walking good. all night. <laughs> yeah, because it's, really it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of work and it's work every day. And I put a lot into cooking. So, you know, that's what that really, that's what that means to us before we get into that. <laughs> well, I want to hear more about the endeavor, the yeah. future endeavor to have a bricks and mortar location or a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But I want to kind of keep pursuing this, like in the moment when you have somebody traveling two hours away, come on now, to get some mm -hmm. food, right? In in winter in, in Idaho, you know, that's saying something. And what also saying something, particularly around, I know you have a range of different um cuisine that you offer from Italian, you said to soul food, but particularly around soul food, we are very particular about our soul food, how greens are cooked, how the mac and cheese is done, like the, the brisket. Mm -hmm. And so um, for you, tell me a little bit about the challenge it is to make sure that everyone, from, whether you're from Memphis or North Carolina or Texas, that has this remarkable experience with Timberlake's cuisine. I think I just do me. I do me to a point to where I am not trying to impress people. I am trying to do something more. Whatever that is, I, it's more in a good way. Like, And I really take my time when I think about it. It's taken us eight years to come up with our smoked mac recipe. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of ridicule on it. There's times where I sent mac and cheese out uh, to um, friends back home, and it was like a brick. <laughs> oh, it was horrible. And I, you know, and I I would tell her right before, I shouldn't have sent that to him. I shouldn't have sent that to him. And she'd be like, no, he'll understand. I was like, no, <laughs> no, you don't understand. Like, like, and, like no, like, it's, it's not that I care about what truly what he, what his, what he, not what he thinks, but like, uh, the prestige of it is like, it didn't, I didn't give the food justice. Yeah, the you feelings know, so, that they have from eating yeah, your food. Yeah, yeah, and, and this person I'm sending to, he knows food. So it's like, you want to always give that mutual respect. Like, I'm not just sending you crap and then it's like, oh man, you know, like, no, I understand what this takes. So it's taken us eight years to get there. And 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 what I do is I do pick it from a little bit from everybody. She's a big um, taste tester of mine. <laughs> and I do a lot of stuff based off her um, texture palette. Because to me, it seems like it goes through. And then sometimes, you know, I kind of weave her and go in the middle. But like our collard greens, our collard greens, she didn't like the one, um, the original ones, how my mom used to make them because they were too soft for her. And I'm like, OK, cool. So then I have to start learning and understanding what collard greens, like the texture they ought to be and how they, you know, how they can get how we can get them crunchier and how we can get them that flavor in without boiling them for, you know, so much that you boil out the the healthy, the health in them, but also the flavor and the texture. So I worked on that for eight years, you know, so both of those two things I've been working on and it's been consistently and I finally got it and I'm sticking with it now. But, you know, like you said, it's a, how, how can I do that across the board? I just say, once it's right, it's right. But once, once you, once you allow the food to do what the food's going to do, you don't have to worry about messing it up. You know well, what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Well, now that the food is doing what the food is doing at Timberlake's <laughs> Cuisine here in the Treasure Valley, yeah. tell us about your menu and um, what you do, what we can find on your menu, whether it is in the truck uh, or in your catering menu. Okay, our catering menu, we have a, um, it's very, it's kind of very um, quaint and short. We do cater to people and we don't have people cater to us. So it's really kind of open. So it's really to whatever you can kind of think of, but we do have a set menu. We have our mac and cheese, our greens, our beans, cornbread, um, our brisket, chicken, and pulled pork and pulled I'm getting ham. Hungry just listening I know. to that. <laughs> it's time. I love it all. Our hot links, we love it. So you know, it really, it really works like that because it allows, um, 
It allows people to be able to afford good cooked home cooked food, but as well as um, for us to be able to try to keep things going up so we're not hurting ourselves. But also everybody has a different taste bud. So not everybody's going to want barbecue. Not everybody's going to want soul food. But when we can kind of let them say, hey, can you do um, this? Can you do that? Oh, yeah, we can. How, how much for this? And then it goes to that. So it allows it to be very um, intimate and cust and you'd be able to be cust what is it? Custom customized. Yeah. Yeah, customized. Yeah. <laughs> customized okay. for the customer. OK. Mm -hmm. And then when you have your food truck, where typically can people find you? Um, so we're in a food truck. It's called, it has on there the Rolling Scones because we actually rent it from um, another small business who doesn't do a lot of um, work in the winter. Okay. So we, you can usually find us on Cole and Fairview right in front of the Burlington's um, in the front of Burlington's parking lot, like closer to the street. And it's a blue trailer, um, red truck. And that's where we usually are when we can get it, get it, get it and actually operate out of it. Okay, so people can find you on Facebook to get catered or on a regular basis. Is it during weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sundays? Um, what are you typically in that location? Right now, um, we're we're just working with trying to get funding so we can always keep keep moving and keep going because you know it takes money to make money. Yeah. So you know that's always the bit that's our biggest thing right now. So, um, but normally Friday and Saturday nights we're right in front of Pink Gillies on Main Street between fifth and sixth and we're there late night um for right now it's just the um best for um our, our situation and the weather <laughs> and it's kind of you know trying to find a place to where we can be consistent enough to keep growing you know okay. now that's yeah. important well and let's talk about growth so from where you're where you started to where you ultimately want to be perhaps with a restaurant um I think I find it really fascinating when you talk to a lot of chefs or restaurateurs or food truck owners, like actually what it entails to be successful. And I would love, Brandon and Adriani, for you to give us a little bit of a, a picture, if you will, paint us a picture for what it is like to endeavor for the dreams that you have, right, to, to create this joy and this essence of food. Um, but now, like how the opportunities, the challenges, the struggles, but also the good things that you've encountered over the last few years. Um, okay, so yeah, starting the business was uh, exciting and also scary, um, but just trying to find that balance and, um, you know, staying consistent, um, relying on your faith and making sure that you are balanced uh like you're saying it is really hard it has more bad days than good um but you know a lot of people tell us that it does take about three to five years to find that consistency and growth and um you know this is going to be going to our second year in april and to see that we have shown that growth uh from last year to this year is definitely impressive and so we just try to use that as motivation and see what we can change going forward this year um, to be more successful. Uh, definitely having that balance of having two girls to raise and they're so young and yeah. um, homeschooling. And now. then, yeah, marriage, yeah. trying to have a, a full balance of it all is definitely a trial. And so we are doing our best. But you know, the good days are, you know what, we cooked and the food is delicious this time. And we're going to, you know, we sell out and all of our customers who support us every weekend, we're so thankful for them because without them, we wouldn't survive. We were able to work all last year, just consistently uh, running our business. And so that's a blessing in itself. So, you know, it's just, it, it is, um, definitely hard though because when you have to rely on when you do make product in those days that it does not sell and it may be something you can't reheat or properly store then it's just kind of like it's you got to bite your lip and yeah. take it and then, you know you, your kids are looking at you like well you know can we do this and you know so yeah. it is definitely hard um but you know we do have everything we need so at the end of the at the end of the day, we just, um, you know, be thankful for that and just get ready for the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Legit. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's the biggest thing about 
like right now we're at a point to where it feels so it feels like we're in such a like wavering situation like we're thinking like do we like the winter's getting kind of crazy so it's like do we kind of do we have it to like do we should we close down and kind of like wait it out or like you know we're thinking now like but it's like no like we got to keep going like you know and it sucks because you know it's you, you somebody it's will reality. come yeah. yeah it's our reality but it feels like it's been like almost three years but it's literally only been a year and a half of us running our own business that just shows me how fast time goes when you're running a business compared to working every and day everything we've been through you know and yeah. we work every day to be honest and my daughter had just said that like man like you're still working and i'm like yeah i was like and that's why we have to do what we have to do because people don't have people don't get to see the 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 backside they just see the finished yeah. product and that's okay i'm always cool with that um because i i just want you to see the finished product you know and um but also know that there is a background and you know, trying to focus on where do we go? Where don't we go? When do we pop up? You know, everybody's struggling. So it's like, do you do know when you're going to have it right? Been, yeah. Or do we bring things down? And that's why looking like right now, we're looking to get into somewhere permanently because we just, the whole point of like not getting into a, um, a brick and mortar was because of expense. Yeah. Like, you know, with the economy and the way it was going, it was people were just, it was that the prices were outrageous. Like yeah. to get into something normally they here, yeah. they still are now. Yeah. But to get into something normally here in Boise, you know, it was, it was, it was right price for Boise, you know, but now things change and we understand that. But um, that's what we're just trying to figure out now, how we can be more consistent for the customer, as in having somewhere they can get delivered. Even if they just get right. it delivered, then they can always, you know, have us in the home and things like that. So I think that's the biggest thing of just knowing that this too shall pass. You have to know that. You, you know? do. You do have to know that. And I appreciate both of you and your honesty and your candor, like, because I think so many of us romanticize you know, when we go out to restaurants or food trucks, uh, what it is. And we just see what's happening externally. We see great food. We see you all um, that are so personable, that love what you do and that you exude this confidence mm -hmm. and this joy. Um, but behind the scenes, when you're creating any small business, um, right. Right, it is really difficult to get going. And those first three years are incredibly important um, of being able to build your foundation. Uh, and I think the other thing that's important in this, th this Treasure Valley is the culinary industry is exploding. Right. We're starting mm -hmm. to see a lot of new concepts come online, whether it's mm -hmm. food trucks or bricks and mortar locations or um, folks that are that are doing things at farmers markets. Mm -hmm. But in order for it to continue to grow, and I think as a consumer of the food, I enjoy that. But I also have a responsibility to make sure that folks like Timberlake's Cuisine can continue to grow. Like we need to make sure that we are supporting you whenever mm -hmm. and however we can so that the food that we like to enjoy from time to time is there when we are ready to have it. And so that's one of the things that we want to do with this culinary chats is make sure, sure that we're telling the story of different vendors who are doing this because we only benefit if we make sure that you can benefit from the hard work that you're putting in. And you both, I would love to hear more. Most restaurants are family businesses, right? Like no matter mm -hmm. if, if all the family is working in the restaurant or not, because it's 24 uh, seven year round, what is that like for your family? Like how proud are you and your, your kids of what you were both endeavoring to do? I, I, I'll answer that one first, I guess, saying that like, <laughs> I think it's, I think it's been really great for our family. It's, um, it's been hard, but it's been great hard because you don't know what you don't know until it's until it's in front of you. Mm -hmm. Like even now, like as I'm that question kind of just made a lot more sense to everything else like that. Mentally, I've been thinking about like you I would never had this experience with my wife or maybe even some of the the head budding with her. Like, you know, <laughs> if I was working somewhere um, 80 hours a week, which I was. Yeah. I was working 80 hours a week when I first moved here and we didn't have conversations, you know, we didn't have time to have conversations, whether we disagreed or agreed. And um, I think that's important because it does make you do that. And also to know how to then set up um, boundaries and, and times. Okay. When we're here, when we're in our bed, no, no business talk, Yeah, you know, it has to stop. And then when we're, when, when the girls are home, 
We got to, you know, be with the girls, you know, and when we need also we need to have our own self time. So I think that's been something really important. I think it's given us time to deal with things that we needed to deal with, with mental health and all that. So to me, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult, but it's difficult and it works out for the right reasons. And I would say for me, I don't know about you. Um, yeah, I would say also for the family aspect, um, it definitely has been a lot of learning. <laughs> Um, definitely just trying to find what is our groove and we, you know, like, is it better for the girls to go to public school? Is it better for homeschool? Um, with our catering, sometimes we do have to go out of state. So, you know, things like that definitely have been a learning curve. And so, um, yeah, just trying to find the dynamic and groove. And like he said, definitely, um, doing this, you know, after finishing the pandemic has shown us a lot and <laughs> during the pandemic it has been a lot yeah um but we're just trying to grow and and continue to to show each other that we can do this and that we definitely uh will succeed it's just yeah. <laughs> we're in the, the deep water <laughs> yeah, we're deep not in easy that yeah really not easy but time. the possibilities like i think one of the things that you guys have to aspire to is there's been so many businesses where it was um, Angel and Kevin Moran from uh, Guru Donuts, right? or Hector uh, Martinez from Waffle Me Up, who started right Modest Beginnings mm -hmm. um, for Angel and Kevin. It was in the back of their house selling coffee and donuts. And for mm -hmm. Hector, right, they had a, a table, I believe, and a food truck at, at the farmer's market. And now that there's a cult following, if you will, and, and that is part mm -hmm. of it is like, right, and I, I appreciate you saying the consistency, people knowing where and when they can find you, um, because that is going to build that customer base that is essential to being able to, to grow your business um, for sure. But I, I get curious as well is like, you have to be really resilient um, in any business, right? Because there's ups and downs and it can be extraordinarily frustrating to push on and to move forward. But one of the things that I really respect about what Timberlake's cuisine is committed to, and that is supporting local and trying to source the majority of your ingredients. I believe you said at least 60% of your ingredients, um, you're sourcing locally with either farmers or folks from the farmer's market. Talk to us a little bit about why that is important to you. So that's the goal. Um, that's the goal. Uh, if I'm being directly honest, that's the goal to be able to do that. And when we can, we do um, as much as we can, but we the why is because it's fresh it's here it's fresh and it's the community like you put in to what you want like you you can't you can't say man i wish it was better here and you're always spending your money elsewhere it, uh, it doesn't where you can't have those both things yeah. so you know um you can't have both of those things so we have to you know put into our own community so then it, it continues to grow and flourish especially if you like the um produce and which we love the produce here moving here from um vegas it's been a night and day <laughs> when it comes to the produce mm -hmm. you know and the meat the mm -hmm. meat is amazing here you know sometimes i feel like i'm getting they they bagged up the wrong brisket and i'm like is this like you know i'm, I'm not gonna say anything like, I'll let them bag it up however but you know it's just it's so fresh it's so much fresher so like things like that that's what we want to get into and we can do that once we're able to actually get in somewhere where we can have established space and where we can have places to put these things like at, at you know buying a whole cow you need space for that yeah. you know and if i want to buy a whole cow to use the whole cow for the whole month or two months i can do that and it's still within health guidelines and all that but to be able to get there that's where we want to get to because we just we really appreciate the quality here mm -hmm. and it's important to put back in so that's a, that's the biggest thing i would say of why that's what we're doing and we do as much as we can now but without funding it is a little more expensive to buy um mm -hmm. fresh which we understand natural yes yeah which yes. we understand but we still you know we want to do that well, and really important for consumers to understand that as well. We talked to a lot to Chris Kamori about this, um, as well as Casey and Dan from The Still. And the efforts and the commitment that local businesses and restaurants mm -hmm. have to source locally, the ingredients are going to be more expensive because they are fresh, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. in order to do that, the food costs may be higher. And that is what we're seeing in the Treasure Valley. And so if we want 
quality food and quality food options and a plethora of them, then mm -hmm. the food costs may hit us differently, but we need to make sure that we continue to support in order for businesses such as yours or others to be able to grow um, and to be able to have be able to pay sustainable wages to employees as well as, as you yeah. move on. Well, I, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. I'm just saying even giving feedback, like letting us know, like maybe give us a smaller portion, let us know like how we can grow mm -hmm. or change. So then a price is fair for our customers and we mm -hmm. could still, like you say, stay we're, in business. We're always thinking of that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like we mm -hmm. remember where our prices started and I always tell my wife, there's a cap to my plates. If my my plates have to go over and it depends on i mean when i'm either when i'm downtown or when i'm um in the trailer there's a cap on when i actually get into a place of what i want my place to go because it's not supposed to be where somebody can't reach and get right. i want right. everybody right. from you know mm -hmm. uh, regular income to yeah. higher income to and you have to build a business and yeah you, have business. you know yeah. And to be able to have that type of food, like not a lot of people can, you know, like you said, cook a certain way. So they want that that quality. But you get there and it's like, oh, man, it's a, you know, it's once a yeah, like once a month thing. So we want it to be like to where it, I mean, right now, if you look at the price of groceries and you look at the price of fast foods, they're the same. Yeah, They're really the same after you get out of two people, one person, excuse me, mm -hmm. one person and that's what we're trying to do. And that's why we have our menu is seasonal through the years so we're not bringing things that like our collard greens are out right now because i can't get them fresh so they're done until they come back in season but yeah. that keeps me too from go having to go and outsource and yeah. pay more money and then i gotta charge you more i have to so yes. th I, I, that's what i think people really like too that we understand that we can't give you the same thing you know certain things all through the year but you understand we're doing that for for you guys and for us so we can keep everything at the same price and we're not saying well inflation because at least the only thing you gotta worry about inflation is you know maybe a dollar so it won't be you know super crazy and that's what we're able to do now so yeah, yeah. well and i think as a foodie i love the seasonality of the menu that we are subjected to here in the treasure valley is the root vegetables that you have access to in the fall right and the mm -hmm. fresh you know um, fruit that you may have in late summer so mm -hmm. i think it actually is a benefit um to the ability to be flexible and have that seasonality yeah. for sure mm -hmm. well um for both of you but specifically brandon as you kind of have these stated goals for timberlake's cuisine and this this entity or the brand. Tell us a little bit about where you want to be five, 10 years from now. What's the big dream? I'm a dreamer. So I love yeah. to hear <laughs> others' dreams because that's the way to manifest it, right? Is to speak it mm -hmm. into reality. Yeah. Yeah. Reality. Like it, like as soon as we can, we want to be in a, we want to be in a permanent situation here. We're not leaving. This is our home. Like this is where we chose to raise our kids. Um, we have family here now, friends and family, and and we love Boise. You know, we love Idaho. So it's we want to get into somewhere of a permanent place to where we can grow. And not only we can grow, but we can actually open our full menu. Like our customers haven't even had to, a chance to really see where, what, what we can really do, you know, on a consistent basis. So we're really, as I say, pulling our shots. You know, because it has to be quality over quantity. I can put it out, but in that smoker, not everything holds the right way. So it's it's about the quality, and that's what that's what we plan on being. Whether that be um, somewhere, you know, off in a small little hole in the wall, or you know, we're also looking possibly into getting into the mall. So you know, it's you know, options, options, and we're just looking for whatever comes right the way. That's what we're doing, and that's what we want to do. We want whoever wants us. So, you know, oh, I love it. I love it. Me. But you can't throw that out there and tease us and say all the capabilities of what you can do and not and leave yeah. me hanging out. Like, again, <laughs> it's about to be lunchtime. I'm starving here. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, so what are some things from Timberlake's Cuisine that we haven't seen yet? Um, For sure, it would be our fish, our fried fish, um, our chicken, loaded our fried potato. chicken, our loaded potato. We have a really crazy yeah. potato. It's nice. We've been working on that. Oh, we have that. What, the egg rolls? But yeah, the egg rolls we have. So we have a rendition on egg rolls, yeah, collard green and whatever meat we choose to put in there. So we can roll our brisket and collard greens together. And we do like the actual egg rolls, like the size you would get from um, Panda. So, okay. you know, but we roll them with our own flavor. So things like that, that we haven't been able to fully put out our desserts. You know, we have like a 
peach um a cream cheese peach cobbler egg roll what? that we want to put out yes and then it's also you need a taste like a, tester for that like a yeah, I you will. That. i'll have to i will <laughs> <laughs> i'll always and that's the thing like we have yeah it's so much more like we have so much more even with the community we want to be able to offer um yeah, internship yeah interpaid internships you know where you know you can come and cook with us for a, a semester if you need it but also you're getting paid for it I feel like everybody should get paid and to me that also helps in helping in the community and nobody has time for free nobody so yeah. you know the thing is like whatever we can do to help do that that's where I see myself that's why I say a permanent spot because for me to be able to do that and welcome ones in and teach ones about the business but also about the culinary the true essence of spot. culinary yeah. yeah like I feel like that's needed you know we're in a world where everything has to look good but it doesn't actually have to be good yeah. so I want it to be both and you know, and, and it to me, it has to be good before it look good. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and that's you know the perfect segue into my next question because you know not everyone can dance, right? Sometimes, <laughs> right, to be able to dance, you have to be able to be good, to look yeah. good, and to feel good, and all those things. So, what's this I'm hearing about the dancing chef? Yeah, I mean that was something I always thought about. Um, an old friend, um, an old friend of mine is back in Vegas. His dad was like, "Man, you can have a gimmick," and I was like. And I thought about it and I was like, I do dance. I dance whenever I, I dance downtown when I'm chilling and it's nothing to really do, but I just love doing it. To me, that also brings happiness. So that's something, you know, where my name comes from, Chef Gruesome. Um, Chef is something I've always been. And then Gruesome is my dance name. So um yeah that's just speaks you know yes yeah, speaks for <laughs> itself <laughs> and it's and it's a double entendre to me so it's like you know the the name means a lot more than just the name it's like gruesome like I'm always growing you know a little bit more ah. always growing so it's like I never stop you know just keep keep learning and keep and to me that's what that means cooking means you you can never be the best because you're always learning something new so it just keeps you you know, keeping on, keeping on. And that's what keeps people like interested. Like, man, this is crazy. Like, you know, so yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. where all that comes in all a right. bubble. <laughs> some. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Well, um, now that we've savored every morsel of insight from Chef Gruesome and Mrs. Gruesome, right? Uh, <laughs> um, first, I thank you for, for this great insight. I'm, I'm, again, starving just thinking about what you are all doing with Timberlake's Cuisine, but I also want to get to know you a little bit better. So we're going to take a quick breather here on Culinary Chats with Indulge Boise, and we'll be right back with Brandon and Adriani Timberlake on the final course. Welcome back to Culinary Chats with Indulge Boise. I'm Angela Taylor, your host. And today we're here talking soul food and soulful conversations with the incredible co-owners of Timberlake's Cuisine, Brandon and Adriani Timberlake, um, who've been really talking about their interesting and extraordinary journey um, from loving being in the kitchen with family to creating an entity that spreads their joy and the essence of food with those of us like myself, those foodies here in the Treasure Valley who enjoy quality cuisine that is made with love. And so um, welcome back to Culinary Chats. I'm here with Brandon and Adriani Timberlake. And uh, on the final course, I guess one of the first questions that I love to ask my guests on the final course, uh, I want to know what your first food memory was. And I would love to hear from both of you. Adriani, I'll throw it to you first. But think about mm -hmm. a moment of your past where food played a starring mm -hmm if you will, in a memorable experience? Mm. <laughs> um, I would say um, the arroz con gandules, it's rice with gandule beans. It's called pigeon peas. Okay. And um, it's just like a very flavorful, but very simple dish. And just, I can remember just always like, my favorite memory would be when I was pregnant with our first daughter. And that was like the one thing that would like, I was very nauseated in the beginning of the, the whole pregnancy. And so I just, um, that would be the one thing that grandma could cook that just like made my, my <laughs> tummy feel good and my heart. And so, yeah, I would have to say that that's like my, um, my favorite memory and dish would be when I was just sitting at our table 
being big, big old pregnant belly and just enjoying that home cooked meal. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Brandon, <laughs> how about you? Uh, my first one is my thoughts would be just um, the cooking barbecue with the family. That's mm -hmm. what my grandma and my mom's like, that's something that's always been there barbecuing and um, like just the taste of that, you know, I, now that I've seen it, it was burnt chicken, but it was still good. Okay. <laughs> but hey, we, I know the no, difference now. No, like, no. Yeah. Yeah. It smoked back then, but you, we, I, now I know the difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I thought, you know, I thought that's how it was supposed to be, but no, I, I do. And that, that taste and like, just, you know, taking it off and being able to eat it in the barbecue sauce. And mm. it's just, you know, that flavor and that taste and that essence of how you feel also from the food. So that's my biggest thing. I think that's why I ended up, ended up after fine dining um doing that for my first of my career to barbecue because it's just it's it's home it's home. Yeah. yeah well kind of playing off of that um for both of you adriani um i know from the south my my family's from the south my parents grew up in, in east texas and we think of comfort food whether it's in, during times like this, it's 29 degrees, snow outside, and there's a food that you can go to that where you right. just feel warm right. inside or something where you're having a bad day and you just you just have this one thing and then all of a sudden you have a better day. Like, is there um, a comfort food? Uh, what's the ultimate comfort dish for, <laughs> for you, each of you? Um, I would have to say um, my ultimate comfort dish would be... Um, uh white jasmine rice a steak cooked by <laughs> and some asparagus on the grill because that was like our first anniversary um dinner and so i think that's just very comforting and special to me i've definitely been uh through a lot in my life but um yeah i think that would be my favorite dish comfort dish well, and for those of you watching here on YouTube, I hope that you witnessed something as Adriani was speaking and telling that story. I was watching the look on Brandon's face and there's this look of just like, again, just <laughs> happiness, like about that, that's a special memory or right? anniversary, yeah. but also that she's enjoys a, sp a specific meal that you cooked for her. So I just love that. And I think that that is what happens for you all when you say you hand a plate over to a customer and you see them mm -hmm. take that first bite and the look that comes over their face as well. Yeah, I, I yeah. did. I didn't know that was her favorite meal. So I'm like, that's good. I thought, uh, I thought that's you were going to say like me look like or something. Comfort. Yeah, I mean, that's her <laughs> comfort. Yeah. I, I mean, I love it because yeah. it is it's special. Yeah. Now yeah. you know. So tonight <laughs> for dinner, I don't know what's for dinner tonight, but change yeah. that menu up. And right. Like, going to steak. Steak and rice. Right. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, mine would have to be the most recent one that I'm, I'm like, that's like, man, I wish I had this as a kid was gumbo. It's the mm -hmm. gumbo and it's the way I do it. I would say with that smoke mac at the bottom and that cheese sauce, it's just, it's like nostalgic for me. Like it sets me right. Like when I eat that, I'm in a better mood. Like I I like when I'm making it, like it makes me happy. Like <laughs> sometimes when it gets to the bottom of that pan and they're like, you got anything left chef? And I'm like, <laughs> no. Maybe. No, no. Yeah, come on. <laughs> just a spoonful. Just that's, a when, that's when you get the that's when you get the old me. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, that chat. Come on. Like, <laughs> you know, but yeah, like, you know, that's my favorite dish. And it's my and I I'm a soup person. Like I love soup and dipping sandwiches. I love that. But I would have to say for sure my favorite comfort meal right now and what it could have been, but if I would have had it back then, would be gumbo and with the smoke mat. Yeah, like mm. it's crazy. I love it. All right, well, let's talk about the other side of the coin, like disasters, like epic kitchen disasters. I know for me, when I moved back to, to Boise in 2015 for that Thanksgiving, a good friend of mine, Mary Toy and I were gonna get in the kitchen and we were gonna you know, make a bunch of food for our families. And so, so we were gonna make some greens. Mm -hmm. and we hadn't seen each other in a long time. So we're making the greens and then we went into the other room for conversation and we're in this good conversation. And, and obviously the liquid was evaporating and boiling off. And so we started to smell a little smokiness uh, and the greens were burnt on the bottom. But then we like, as we tried to recover some of those greens, Mary's going to kill me for telling this story publicly. <laughs> but when we tried to recover the greens, we noticed this smoky kind of flavor. And it actually was the smokiness that we love in some collard greens. And so we packaged those, mixed them with a second batch that we made. Um, but there were a lot of comments from our friends and family in different households who had Thanksgiving dinner and had those greens. They're like, how did you get that smoky flavor? 
<laughs> so we're like, okay, uh, it's a secret that we're not going to tell anybody, but yeah. that burnt meat that you spoke of, are there any other branding kitchen disasters that you can, you can share with those of us that can't cook so we can feel a little bit better about our abilities in the kitchen? Yeah, I burnt, I, man, I mess up a lot. Like, <laughs> I mess up a lot. Like, that's why I learned, though. But like, like you said, you would have never known about a smoky flavor if you didn't burn it. Same with me. Like, I didn't understand smoke, adding smoke. I used to use artificial liquid smoke. It's not the same. Imitation smoke would never taste like the original. And like you said, I would say burnt beans. Oh, my goodness. I burnt my beans more than I could ever remember. And it's always like something that I dropped the ball and forgot or I didn't. And then, you know, or. I would say a kitchen disaster, it would be the first time we ever did a pop-up here. Okay. I did not know that it could get 19 degrees <laughs> and that at 19 degrees, fire doesn't want to start. And I'm like, I have a torch, it's lighting, it's just not starting. It's not. So I was already behind. You know, I didn't give myself that cushion and the ribs, they were not getting hot enough. So... I served them out and everything in my body was like, man, these people been waiting, you mm -hmm. know, like, you know, and I, and I second guessed it and I shouldn't have, I should have been like, guys, they're not ready. I'm sorry. You got to come back. Or I understand if you don't, but I was just nervous. Cause you know, the news was there earlier and I'm like, he did a thing and it was all kind of quick, <laughs> man. Yeah. And it was chewy. She was like, those were the chewiest ribs. It was one lady who too, but I, I was okay with that because I needed to hear it because I knew somewhat maybe they probably just were not, they were cooked, but they just were not where they needed to be tender wise. Yeah. So when that was, I say that's still my biggest one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I, every time I do good, yeah. I'm like. But we did redeem ourselves. We were able yeah, to cater for weddings. Yeah, so. yeah, I was actually able to help <laughs> Kate. Yeah, her, yeah. her daughters um, and then also multiple people in their family. Yeah. Well, they and kept coming was, back. Yeah. So something must have been good, right? Something must have been good. It was. I think yeah. that's what it was. And she just knew it was like, you know, first time jitters, but that's yeah. still my yeah. biggest yeah. one. Like, oh, oh and then the mac and cheese thing. from Chris. Yeah, that was. Oh, yeah. Boy, yeah. He's but I redeemed it, though. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Flattered all oh, over the so mac so and cheese. Okay, now you don't have to spill too much tea. Don't, don't spill too yeah. much tea, right? Like, yeah, I'm telling well, I'm just telling you, yeah, I've dropped it, man. It's, and it's been like, man, now it's, and it's hard, especially when you got brisket and you drop it. Cause you gotta go get another one and then you gotta trim it. So it's like certain things, like, yeah, we've had, man, beginning stuff, mm -hmm. beginning years, eight years ago, you wouldn't even think we were. <laughs> Yeah. Right, now I don't feel bad at all about some of my no, no, don't at all. Like, like yeah. my, my chef make you better. Okay, they yeah. make you better. They really do. Okay, well, Adriani, I would love to hear from you. Like, you know, a good friend of mine, um, Victor Scargill, who's been on the show one year for his birthday. I was like, I'm going to make a lasagna, and it didn't hit me until I was in the middle of the process of making lasagna for this party that I'm like, wait a minute, he's a chef. Like he probably has had a great lasagna, like the pressure I felt for cooking for a chef. Like, oh do goodness. you have, like, what is your experience in cooking meals for the family or for Brandon? Oh, geez, Louise. Um, it's very hard. I, well, and then honestly, just to, you know, I just second guess myself very much. So I, I hardly cook, to be honest. But when I do, they all say that it's amazing and that it tastes so good. And, <laughs> and then he'll take the bowl and I'm like, I'm all watching, like biting my nails. Like, well, it's amazing it how we feel so, so much pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is. we do. We do. That's yes. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> well, a couple more questions. Um, so grateful for both of you for joining us today on Culinary Chats with Indulge Boise. Uh, but Brandon, I asked all the chefs this question. Um, for those of us that are you know, not great in the kitchen. What are three ingredients that you can't live without? Whether it's for your catering business or at home. I would say it would be, be kosher salt, right? That's what you're asking ingredients. Yes. Against, right? Yeah. Kosher salt, um, black pepper, and garlic. Mm, I like like that. those are three things I think flavor pops from. You know, I, I say kosher salt because it's important. I don't use itemized salt because it's it's just too salty and it's not fresh. And kosher salt allows you to level everything off properly to add, buy things together better. So, yeah, I would say that pepper, kosher salt of whatever source that is or sea salt. And then um, um, garlic. Yeah, salt. garlic salt. Not okay. pepper, not powder. Not yeah. the power. Garlic garlic granulate. Like, like, yeah, garlic or garlic granulate, whatever. Yeah. But garlic. It has to be garlic. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. And got a little lesson in uh, chemistry I, there as well for the kosher salt. I wasn't aware of that. Like, right, the yeah. salt is a little bit saltier. So that is good to know. So kosher salt, some black pepper and some garlic. Some garlic. That yeah. is some great advice and a side of humility. Right. Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> love. Love. <laughs> That's another key ingredient in being a good chef. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, Brandon and Adriani, where can our um, YouTube viewers find Timberlake's Cuisine? Um, in town. We're on um, in Boise, Idaho. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on YouTube. And we're on um, TikTok, TikTok as, well. as well. So you can find um, wherever we're going to be there. We always post a day before. So just, you know, if, you, if you're looking for us and um, usually Friday and Saturday, we're out downtown in front of Pink Gillies, um, 1130 to 3 a.m. And um, you can always drive up and you don't have to come down if you're not into the drinking scene or, you know, chilling and the kids and everything, the young people. But if you just want to pull up, grab a plate, let us know and we'll get that ready for you so you can pull up and be able to go. But right now, that's where we are. Awesome. Awesome. Any special product projects or products? Coming up yeah, we're, we're just projects we're working on. Like I said, we've got a few spots that we're really, truly working on, hoping that they um, it rolls through. And now we're getting ready for this year's um, Soul Food Festival. We want to be able to do a, I want to do a whole hog this Soul Food Festival. I think that's um, the, the, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to barbecue. And you can't really say you're a pit master until you do a whole hog <laughs> and you do it right. So I think this year we will be um, doing a, a whole hog. It will be fresh straight from um, Utah, and um, it'll be nice. It'll be something to, it'll be one for the books. It'll be our third year, so mm -hmm. it's going to be a nice one, yeah. Nice. Well, tell us a little bit more. The Soul Food Festival takes place in July of 2024. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to the Idaho Black Community Alliance, their Facebook page, or if you go to um, Boise Soul Food Festival, their Facebook page, you can find out more details um, about that event. There's a lot of phenomenal food, some great vendors, some great entertainment, comedians, musicians at that event. Um, Brandon, tell us a little bit about that experience. Like, so the whole hog, I will be there for that. Um, but tell us about that experience as a business and a small uh, a vendor. And a, and a small, and a small, quick little snippet, long story short, it's a, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Like it really helped put us on with um, majority of our, our customers um, more than we knew until we got downtown. We didn't know how many people really that was there that is normally down, you know, and in, in that area. And, it's so good because it's a nice little community, you know, and everybody's there helping each other and you get to see the watermelon guy. That's a really cool thing. We was able to be across from him. He comes from out of state, but he's here every year and he brings that fresh watermelon, all different flavors. And I think just as a small business, it's good because it helps you grow. Um, it helps you get a nice big fan. You, do, I didn't even know that we had a soul food festival in, in Boise, Idaho. And when I and then when I did go, I was like, I wonder how many people is going to be because predominantly it's not a lot of black folks in Boise yet. Yeah. You know what, what I'm saying? So it's growing and it's and it's really um, mixing really well here. Um, so I didn't know though three years back and I mean two two years back and it's been great ever since. So many people come to support um, all sh you know all colors and ethnicities and all are welcome. Nobody's ever feeling excluded and and you just see smiles through the whole day. Mm -hmm. Everybody's smiling from the workers to us to you know we're rushing and getting everything going and people always like hey next year are y'all gonna have this and I'm like yeah we're trying we're trying so it allows people to get excited for the that event and just the culture in itself so mm -hmm. I think it's a really nice platform that Trish has put on and um Miss Walker has put on and I think it it's going to continue to grow no matter what so and we're yeah. going to be with it every year that, I love it. Thank you for that. that I want to make a special shout out to Trish and Kenny Walker from the Idaho Black Community Alliance mm -hmm. um, and their efforts to do so many great things for small businesses, uh, minority owned businesses here in the Treasure mm -hmm. Valley, and uh, certainly the Soul Food Festival, as well as Sherry Baber for Black Like mm -hmm. Me, um, also involved with the Soul Food Festival, mm -hmm. um, and Brian Lee, um, who's on the, the board of the Soul Food Festival as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. um, really doing some great things. And I think it's so important um, as we continue to make sure we're telling stories um, and that the, the Black community uh, in particular um, continues to grow here in the Treasure Valley, but that brings everybody together through food. Yes. 
And so I um, look forward to the 2024 Soul Food Festival this year as well. And look forward to not only the whole hog uh, in June or July um, from Brandon and Adriana Timberlake at Timberlake's Cuisine, um, but for your menu um, from this winter and spring and next fall and next, yes. <laughs> all the things. Uh, Brandon and Adriani, thank you both so much for joining us today on Culinary Chats with uh, yes, Indulge thank Boise. You for having us. Yeah, this was absolutely outstanding. There are so many gems and so much insight that you both were willing to share about what the journey is like, uh, what your journey is uh, currently, and what you're looking forward to in the future. And we, we wish you well on that journey. We look forward to consuming a lot of Timberlake's cuisine in the near future uh, and hearing what's next. Next, uh, for you on, on the journey. Thank right. you. Thank yes. you so much. Thanks thank you. Thank you. Us. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. That was another episode of Culinary Chats with Indulge Boise. Again, I'm your host, Angela Taylor, the owner of Indulge Boise Food Tours. Thank you so much for joining us on YouTube. If you enjoyed our conversation today with Brandon and Adriani, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below so that you can be one of the first ones to watch and listen to our next culinary chats conversation in those Boise. So much exciting happy exciting happening in culinary industry in Idaho. And we look forward to being in continued stories each and every one of you. Again for today, until next time, make sure that you continue to have some food for thought and some soulful conversations with your friends and family. Thanks again. Well, we really enjoyed being a part of today and sharing our experience of how it was, uh, how it's been to grow this business. Um, definitely, Miss Taylor has been very um, kind in sharing her experience with our uh, catering. And so I really enjoyed hearing her thought there. And um, we definitely appreciate the um, the interview to grow and meet new different customers and so yes uh we are excited and thankful again for being here so yeah have a good one how you live in treasure valley this chef gruesome i'm mama t come check us out on youtube with culinary chats with indulge boise hi i'm angela taylor owner and chief indulge officer for indulge boise food tours join us for an upcoming episode of culinary chats with indulge boise on youtube with brandon and adriani timberlake of timberlake's cuisine it is a delicious conversation i can't wait for you to hear it and i also can't wait for you to follow our new friends brandon and adriani tell us where they can find you you can find us on social media tiktok instagram um facebook also we are. Um, we do have our GoFundMe up for our business. We're looking to expand. Times are hard, but we appreciate everybody's um, share and donation. Um, we greatly appreciate you guys, and we'll continue to do our best to be here for you so we can keep giving you that delicious food. Yes, thank you, guys. <laughs>